everything in one it encompasses, you know, service skills, a whole range of skills there are demonstrated. Why not open a restaurant, something like that? Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, VicDef have been talking about the possibility of um, <coughs> organising a social enterprise, so that's a very good idea. Other comments? Yes? <laughs> uh, can you come to the front? No? Yes. <coughs> I disagree with a, a deaf cafe because deaf people just order one thing and they'll sit there for four hours and just talk the whole time. It's best if they have a seat meter, if you like, and we can make a lot more money that way. We've noted that. Thank you, David. Um, other comments or questions under this? Yes? in relation to this topic? A deaf cafe with a licence? Oh, you mean, oh, sorry, an alcohol licence. Okay, great. Uh, moving on, I think. So we have two or three rather more specific questions that we'll move to in relation to partnering with other like organisations, um, what are those organisations who we could work closely with? Um, one comment immediately comes from the floor is uh, Deaf Children Australia. Another organisation? Uh, there's yeses and noes in regards to that. <coughs> Did you want to expand on that comment? What that might look like? Um, okay, David? <coughs> I think it's very important for us to have good relationships with uh, education providers, VDI and DCA. I know some people are a bit unsure about that, talking about the person that represents the DCA, but I think it's important to consider relationships regardless. Uh, if we're thinking about the deaf community and we have deaf children that transition to deaf adults, it's important that we consult uh, with all organisations for the betterment of our community. Other comments? Did uh, someone want to add any more or include other partners? Look, I think it's very important that we do uh, work with other organisations, but organisations we can trust, that's paramount. There are some organisations and out there that I don't trust and I don't believe I'm alone in that thought. So, yeah, add trust in there. Other comments? Yes? Um, other organisations? Any? No? Okay. In terms of partners, are we isolating it to Victoria? Uh, it's very much an open question, so you can answer it the way you want. I was just mentioned Deaf Victoria, thinking about advocacy. I work for Deaf Sports and Rec Victoria, so helping Deaf uh, Victoria uh, and considering a partnership between the three organisations, so DSRV, Deaf Victoria and Vic Deaf, and how we can provide services to children, be it sporting and other areas as well. James, can I just add there, are you talking about Deaf Victoria, uh, Deaf Sports and Recreation Victoria should work closely together, but how do you see that happening? So, for example, Vic Def already provide office um, and access to resources here, um, internet access and so forth, but what more do you have in mind? I 
thinking about the mentoring program or leadership programs, if, if we're organising an event uh, that VicDef can um, support, uh, we can assist your events and, and you can assist our events. So helping each other to promote, promote each other's services and events. Great, thank you. Any other comments? No? Okay, we'll move to the next question. The next question is about VicDef and uh, our services to deaf and hearing people. Not all people use our services, and we know that some people never use our services. How do we make those people use our services? What would make them come to VicDef for support or services? Some only use VicDef for interpreting services. Some people only come to the Christmas rally once a year. Some people only receive the newsletter. So how can we um, increase our client base, if you like, by getting people to come to VicDef? So you could provide community classes um, look, I'm just thinking off, off the top of my head here, perhaps a workshop so that people who don't use those services can come and use those community classes. Um, Melissa? Interestingly, um, we had a guest speaker at um, workshops um, on taxation and wills and things like that. And only um, small numbers attended those uh, sessions. So maybe community classes is a slightly different focus and that might attract more people. So that's worth considering. Workshops and having workshops are great, but sometimes deaf people can't relate to hearing speakers. So it's great to have deaf people who can speak to deaf audiences. And there are many deaf people out there who can educate the deaf community on topics such as this. It's not the right forum to have a hearing person in that situation. Um, this location, the, a workshop to be in, not, this location is not suitable, is what she meant. Uh, yeah, you've got it, Chris. Um, other comments? Um, yes, a deaf club. In relation to that, Chris, uh, the idea of a deaf club. Okay, other comments? Right, I've got one more question and uh, probably the last 15 minutes is just um, some brainstorming on this open question. If there was one thing that Vic Def could do for you as a community, what would that one thing be? A deaf club, there you go, there's the answer. Um, and said a deaf club. Uh, what's one thing that Vic Def could do for you? 
And if you could ask <clears throat> what it looks like so we can get a better picture of that as well. Yeah, what would that uh, look like then? Depends on the age of the individual. A person such as myself, I would come for my friendships and to socialise and catch up with friends. <laughs> Someone just said Anne's Deaf Club, no. <laughs> the younger generation, so they can actually meet each other and make new friends, learn the language in the correct way. Maybe to meet someone, fall in love, get married, have kids, and they can bring their kids to the deaf club. And then the children can just run free and wild all over the place and shout to their heart's content. Parents would be deaf, they wouldn't be able to hear them anyways. That's what my kids did, and I'm sure many other kids in that situation did the same. But that's the heart of it, where, kids, where, where deaf communities can come together and share information. I know there's Facebook now, and I personally don't have Facebook. I do. I sign it like this: is to expose yourself. <laughs> but this, the, the Deaf Club, is the centre of everything. Everything on the board, everything that we've listed tonight, stems from a Deaf Club. If people want to know something, they can go to the Deaf Club and they can learn things. And that's the starting point, is ensuring we have a Deaf Club. Where? The location? I'm not sure. We need to find a huge block of land, not a high-rise building, and not a piece of land that we share with other organisations. My vision is to have individual locations. I know other people don't share that, but that's how I feel. Uh, are we back online? Okay, great. We've got one question. Yeah, you could sign it to me. The question is, for Brent, maybe there's a lot of information that's missing, but is there anything in relation to hearing families who have deaf children and working together? Often hearing families receive the wrong information about how to raise their children and teenagers and they get the wrong information from media. So it would be a good idea to work with the media in order to educate those people better. Okay. Okay, so a different person has made a comment and that comment is to use the Deaf Club as a social enterprise in order to run a cafe like the Tray Block Cafe. In relation to the first comment, I think we've been talking a little bit about education um, and getting more involved in the proliferation and education of sign language. Um, the Deaf Club, we've also talked about that, so that's definitely a common theme. In relation to a social enterprise, I guess that's a big question mark, but uh, thank you for your comment from online. So what's that one thing that De Vic Deaf could do for you? I think we've pretty much covered everything. We've got about 10 or 15 minutes to go, so we'll open that up to the floor for any um, bizarre or strange idea that people might have, and maybe some uh, online questions as well. <clears throat> I've met a lot of deaf people in the community and at different events, and they have mentioned the importance of a deaf club. and. I, I agree with the idea of having a deaf club, but how will it be run? Will it be run by the community itself or run by Vic Deaf? Will it be paid staff? What are the, are the finer details? I think that's important for the community to be aware of.
Chris, do you want to answer that one? Oh, I think oh did you want me to? Oh, sorry, was the question for everyone? Uh, open question. Oh, I see. Okay, thanks, David. So, does anyone have an answer to David's question? Staff or community members? I strongly believe it should be shared. Perhaps VicDef provides the location and puts it out there for other organisations to share, such as the sporting clubs, uh, advocacy clubs or VicDef or the senior clubs, or after school, if there are uh, book clubs, for instance, or movie nights uh, that are alcohol-free, for example. I think it should be a centre that's open to the community to use and for a variety of purposes. I don't have an idea. I think it's just important to give you a bit of history, just so you can envision how it used to be. It was under the Vic Deaf umbrella, but there was the Deaf Committee. Remember there was the board? And there was the Deaf Committee. And they, had, they were all Deaf people. So if anyone wanted to utilise the hall, they had to contact the Deaf Committee. They had to send a letter, the, remember, I'm talking years ago, they had to do it by letter. They didn't just call in or anything like that. And they had to inquire a booking for the hall, whether it be the netball club wanted to book it for the 15th of August for a presentation evening. And then they would meet together as a committee, discuss it, say, oh, no, no, that, that, that crowd's known for being quite rowdy, you know, we don't use them or anything. And then if they agreed, they would give them permission. And if there was... Any, if they left it in a, in a dirty condition, then they were penalised. They had to make sure they cleaned up the space after they used it and put it back how they found it. And it was a letter sent to the Deaf Committee. I know that's a bit old-fashioned nowadays, but just so that you understand how it used to work. Any other comments to this? Yes? I like the idea of it being a Vic Deaf building and maybe we have a Deaf cafe or whatever we have on it and having it being rented. So it's rented but it's deaf, a Deaf run business that is, a, is rented out. So electricity, gas, I'm not too sure how that would work. Um, the alcohol licensing, food. Maybe so that way external people could also use our building for rent so it's not just for the deaf community that could create more awareness. But I would like to see it run by deaf people with supervision, of course. Great. OK, another comment? Another comment from online. In relation to Anne's comment, run the club run by a um, an up upstarting organisation. If FICDEF were to um, sell uh, selling our um, building, um, so if so, FICDEF have sold the building and used that funding to set up a club similar to um, in the New Zealand model in Auckland, the Deaf Club 
that exists over there. Thanks for that comment. In Auckland, Chris. Okay, so um, we've answered David's question, hopefully. We've got five or ten minutes for any other ideas or questions before we close. <coughs> Mentioning setting up a club similar to that in New Zealand. I've been there myself, um, but they have identified the limiting numbers. So they have decided to rent out the premises. So there are non-deaf organisations that will use the premises. So I'm thinking about if we were to set up a deaf club, perhaps I know it's quite an expense, but thinking <coughs> about the use, maybe we could purchase a pub instead, uh, such as what you have in the Richmond area or South Melbourne area. Um, and the greater community can still use it for food and, and beverage purposes, but it's still somewhere the deaf community can meet, if it's every week, for instance, and there's a, spe a special area upstairs, for example, and the deaf community have the opportunity to uh, work in the pub, in the hospitality industry. Um, we can provide apprenticeships, for instance, and uh, it can be run by deaf people, but the greater community can also attend uh, seven days a week, and that can be another way to make money. But it's completely run by deaf people. It's a professional enterprise and there are paid staff. Uh, if, if, if I'm working behind the bar, I'll be providing you all with free samples, that's for sure. Well, that's a very good uh, summary then. <laughs> David wants. Okay, any other ideas or comments? <clears throat> No? Nothing from online. Okay. Yes? I know the NDIS will throw all of our plans out of whack and that will have a huge impact on individuals over 65. I'm wondering if Vic Def can focus on that area because deaf people over the age of 65, their access to interpreters and everything is going to be hugely impacted. I've got another six years myself before I get there, but you and I both, David. Did you want to make a comment about that? No? No. Okay, any other comments? No? Yes? Thought I'd brave the stage. I'm not talking about a deaf club, I'm going back to Vic Deaf itself. I think to a patron for the deaf community, we should have a deaf patron. That. That's a good question. Um, I think in New South Wales they have um, Nola Colfax as their patron, so we don't have anything like that here. So maybe we could use that model, recognise their hard work, uh, or someone's hard work in uh, contributing to the community. So we have a comment online. Two comments, in fact. One, Uh, I love David's idea about the pub. Maybe it creates opportunities for pathways for deaf and hearing, hard of hearing children to learn um, industry and apprenticeships and training, like the Trade Block Cafe. Um, so that could lead to employment opportunities. The second comment is to, it takes a village to raise. Sorry, could you repeat that, please? Go back, start again. It takes a village to raise a child. 
Right, okay, so yes, I, I understand now. So the deaf community then needs to support deaf children so that the community can exist into the future and Auslan remains as strong as it is. So it takes a village to raise a child. Okay, got it. Excellent, fantastic comment. So I think that might bring us to a close. If there's nothing else from our online community, last one maybe. I like the idea of a deaf cafe. I think it's great for us to provide opportunities for the deaf community to integrate into the hearing community and provide opportunities for the hearing community to understand what the deaf community is about. In terms of finances, that's, that's my background. So considering um, admin and, and financial areas as well, the skills that can be learned to not only the hospitality and service industry, but also if you consider it from a, a business and commercial and financial perspective, the opportunities are great. Great, thanks for that, Simon. So, uh, no, I think we've run out of time now. I will hand back to Chris for a wrap up. Thank you, Brent, for um, facilitating the questions and thank you to everyone for your input um, and your ideas. It's interesting, some of these things are things that we know already and it's great to just get um, a reminder of what's important to people. Um, what we will do, as I said, is meet um, in various places around Victoria and have similar discussions to the one we've had tonight. And then our job is to bring it all together, to collate all of the ideas as you know, we can't meet everyone's needs and do everything that everyone says, but there's some pretty strong themes that are coming out of um, these discussions and what it is that the community and clients think is important. Um, there's also another opportunity, and that's through an online survey. So um, on our website, if you're interested to also go in and answer some specific questions there, please feel free to do that or let other people know if they can't get to an actual consultation to please go online and, and complete a survey because that would be really helpful um, as well. So yeah, again, thank you for your participation and attendance. So sorry about the technology. Um, we'll try and get that right next time. Um, thanks to our captioner up the back, also to our interpreters. Uh, and to Niaz and Michael for doing a great job um, setting up all the equipment. Um, and because it's new equipment, I think we'll have a lot that we've learnt from tonight for next time round. So thanks again for your participation. And for those of you that are here, um, please feel free to stay around for some refreshments. And we'll um, keep you updated about the process as we, we go along towards July next year with our new plan. Thanks very much.